Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So I got a request to do a topic on N95s versus KN95s. I thought that was a really good idea. So I'm going to talk about that today. Um, I also have some good news I'm going to sprinkle in uh, after that. I'm going to talk about uh, an addendum to the uh, the, the ongoing discussion about whether aerosolized particles play a larger role in the transmission of COVID than previously thought. So I did do a video on that, actually a couple of videos on that a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I said that as I learn more things, I would keep you guys up to date. And I have some good news on that front. So I'll share that too. Um, some of you might have noticed I have sprinkled in some other topics, like some of the ones that are just more the broader um, goal of my channel, which is overall health. And I, I did one recently on the anti-inflammatory herb turmeric. So yeah, they never really get as much traction as stuff that's all COVID and especially product reviews. I get it. I know. And I'm so happy, by the way, that I've been able to, you know, fill a, a minimally met need, in my opinion. I'm, so I'm, I'm really glad about that. But I do want to mention, it's going to sound like a cheap plug here, that I think that there is a lot to be said, though, about maintaining and optimizing your overall health um, during a pandemic and other times so that, you know, first of all, you can have a, a well-functioning immune system. And second, if you were to catch something like this, that you would have a better uh, opportunity to recover fully. So um, let me know if there are other topics that in that broader range that would particularly appeal to you. Just put it in the comment box. And always, I appreciate all the suggestions, comments, questions, feedback, and everything. I'm really having fun with all the um, interaction that I'm getting, and thank you so much. I just really wanted to make sure to say that. So, okay, so onto the N95 versus the KN95. These are, um, some people refer to them as masks. They're actually respirators, and they fall into the category of filtering face piece respirators, or FFPs, or at least they're supposed to. So the N95 is the, the U.S. standard, and the KN95 is the Chinese standard. Um, in order to claim that they are compliant, they have to show in testing that they possess the physical properties that would be required and also the performance. And they are subject to regulatory standards so around the world. So the KN being the Chinese, the N95 being the one in the United States. There are others from other countries, but that's beyond the scope of this video. So um, in the US, actually, the KN95 is not considered a face piece respirator. And the reason is that um, it it wouldn't meet our criteria. Okay, so the criteria that the Chinese government sets is very different than the than the criteria that the United States government sets. So part of the criteria is that it has to um, be a face piece that is sealed down and minimizes leakage. And actually in the Chinese, the KN95, the standard is that the inspiratory leakage, so the leakage that when the user inhales can be as high as 8%. And that could be because of filtering or it could be because of leakage and fit, it doesn't matter. But um, so tiny little aerosol particles is, as could be as high as 8% leak on the inhale, whereas in the United States, States, it has to be zero or negligible. Um, the other thing is that the KN95 is not regulated in terms of how it is fit. So it might have um, ear loops versus a head strap and ear loops not providing quite as secure a fit. Um, and there are other things that you know have to do with its design that might contribute to that leakage. Um, <clears throat> so early on in the pandemic, and this is why we're all hearing about the KN95, and I've heard I've heard more than one video on YouTube where somebody, you know, somebody who has some pretty good credentials after their name, like better than mine, um, is recommending to go ahead and use the KN95. That's like all you can find is sort of like a second best to the N95. And I, I would like to respectfully disagree with that. And here's why. Early on in the pandemic, the FDA put out um, an advisory that said it's reasonable because um, we don't have, there are shortages of the PPE that we need in this country to fight the COVID. And again, this was very early on in the pandemic and we didn't have adequate or approved or available alternatives. And in light of that and the emergency need, the FDA felt that it was very reasonable to go ahead and and um, approve some of these other respirators like KN95s, for example, for emergency use for our um, the people on the front lines. Well, uh, it wasn't long after that that they actually began testing some of these and guys, um, they ended up like out of, there was a group of um, 11 masks that were approved to be, you know, for sales directly to health care organizations like large hospitals for people on the front lines to be using. And of the 11 masks that they tested, um, seven of them failed. Um, one of them performed um, by filtering as few as 24 to 35 percent of the small particles. 
I mean, you would have been better off with like a surgical mask and like a little bit of tape, maybe. Um, the FDA ultimately banned 65 out of 80 manufacturers from, that were authorized in China at one point to import here. They ended up banning them from importing those to the United States. So at this point, there is a short list of approved KN95s. Um, I'll link that down below in the description box. I'll tell you for my purposes, I'm not... I'm not even going there because um, I think this stuff is always changing. I, it seems to me like there's not a lot of transparency. And so this this one manufacturer from China could be approved today. And then something about that manufacturing could change. And maybe the FDA doesn't test it for a while, if ever. Um, to my mind, I think a lot of these respirators in general are pretty overrated. I think they're really important for people who are working in the ICU or in environments where there is a large proportion of aerosol being generated. Um, other than that, I've said before on this channel, um, I know that you know with this discussion of aerosols, there's more and more interest in things um, like respirators versus masks. Um, but my own personal opinion is that uh, the role of aerosols, if any, is going to have to sp speak to other mitigation efforts, not tighter masks and smaller filters, just because I don't think that they are, um, I don't think they're practical. I think they're highly impractical for the whole general population to be using. I think they require a certain amount of expertise to use correctly and safely. Um, and uh, yeah, so <laughs> there we have it. Um, and the seal, for those of you, everybody who's seen my videos before, you guys know how I feel about a seal. I don't think it's really practical to walk around with a, a, a really sealed device on your face for any period of time. Um, so uh, one thing I will say is that if you are going to go look for these, um, of course, at a minimum, use the page from the FDA website that I'm going to attach. There's an appendix that has the approved um, Chinese manufacturers of KN95 that at this point, as of now, are approved. Um, you might want to refresh that page. Um, uh, one telltale sign of a counterfeit one is one that would, that says, I guess there are some that they put NIOSH approved on them. Well, NIOSH is the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, and that's in the United States agency, so they wouldn't be um, doing any kind of approval on a Chinese mask. So if you see NIOSH approved on a Chinese KN95, it's probably a counterfeit. Um, I would assume that almost anything you can buy just out in the free market um, that says KN95 is probably counterfeit because um, as there are fewer and fewer that are approved, even for the healthcare organizations, that you know is going to funnel those, hopefully, um, the resources that are needed to to those industries. Um, I think there's less of a, um, of a shortage anymore with even the N95s in those health. I certainly hope so. So um, I hope that was helpful. Let me know that basically my opinion on the KN95 is um, no. And my opinion on the N95 is really probably not for everyday use. So which brings me to the issue that I said I was going to talk about with the role of aerosol particles. So um, I had said before that, you know, I, I'm sure there is some role that aerosol particles play. We know that like from the ICU. So the question is how much and in what circumstances um, transmission by aerosol is a consideration with COVID-19 for the rest of us out and about who aren't in ICUs but are in, you know, our everyday lives. Um, and I'm sure there's some, and I'd said before, I'm sure it's nuanced, but I, it, we know for sure there are certain settings that lend themselves best um, for the virus to form the aerosol. Um, and those would be cool and dry and minimally ventilated. So an enclosed place with air conditioning and not circulated air from the outside, cool, dry, so that that outer wet layer of the respiratory droplet can evaporate quickly. And that's what leaves that tiny little aerosol particle dancing around in the air. Um, so that's why I said, I think that as we talk about this more and we learn <clears throat> more um, where this is coming from, I think it speaks to other mitigation techniques and some of you who have messaged me and asked me like what do I recommend for this setting or that setting I'm always saying windows open um, ideally a fan <clears throat> next to the window but facing into the room so it's pulling the air from outside in and circulating it around. I know that might make the air conditioning bills kind of high, but um, you know, in some countries you can't get into a taxi cab without having the windows down for the whole ride. Doesn't matter how it, how it is outside. So, um, but one more thing that I read, there was a couple of engineers that put together a little video on uh, pbs.org. I think I'm gonna try to find it. Um, unfortunately, I lost it, but I'm gonna try to find it and link it down below for you. But one of the things they mentioned is that, um, you know, part of the issue of a face mask, a lot of people complain that the face mask Mask right here. It's hot and it's humid and 
guess what? It's working if it's hot and humid. So one of the things that that does is it really inhibits um, the formation of aerosols. So the more people are wearing masks, the less we're even producing aerosols. Because when you exhale, um, whatever you exhale into a mask, it's left right here next to you. Um, you know, for that extra second or so, and that's enough so that those, even the smaller respiratory droplets tend to fall. They can't aerosolize. They can't, that outer shell can't evaporate because right next to your mouth, it's too warm and humid. So that warm, humid inside the mask, that's a good thing. Um, so I thought that was really good news. And I think it just speaks to, you know, what I think anyway, which is that this is going to, um, the, the answer is not going to be to put on tighter and tighter masks with tinier and tinier filters. The answer is going to be all the other mitigations. One, everybody wearing face masks. Okay. The best thing is with everybody wears masks, almost all of these things go away. Um, fresh air, ventilated air, outside air, not so dry, not so cold, not so crowded. Um, and of course, there's no substitute for social distancing. So I hope that was helpful. Um, let me know. Um, please do check out some of the other videos that I have, even though they're not particularly on COVID per se, but I am wanting to expand that a little bit. I do want to say thank you so much. I'm so happy that I've expanded my subscribership here. Um, as most of you guys know, I don't do affiliate links on my channel because it's important to me that I'm trustworthy and not biased. Um, so I'm left to grow my channel just this way. So I really appreciate you guys sharing with anybody who might find it helpful. Of course, I want to grow my channel. Um, and so there we have it. So let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if you have any other comments, questions, feedback. I love it. I love getting all the interaction. And until next time, be well. Bye-bye.